Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a fairly short video. Um, someone today asked me about how I do um, uh, VR via sequencer. Uh, I had recently posted a video of this kind of quick VR demo that I had uh, threw together for a friend uh, and then made uh, posted a video about it um, on my YouTube channel, actually just showing the, the end result, not any kind of like breakdown or anything like that. And so this video is kind of semi-tutorial, semi-breakdown about how this came together. Um, uh, the person who had asked me about this uh, today um, doesn't uh, claim to not really know anything about Blueprint and um, like how I made this work via sequencer. Um, well, spoiler alert, I did use Blueprint, um, but it's really not uh, as hard as you might think. Um, some of the, um, you know, the code I was executing and all that type of stuff, that gets a little bit more involved, like, you know, the, how it handles the turrets and that kind of thing. Um, but, um, as you can see here, when we hit, uh, play, and I don't have my, uh, uh, any of my headsets on at the moment, so I can't, like, look around, but, um, um, Basically, what's happening here is that the player character is uh, following this path that I animated, um, and it's just a very, uh, very quick, very simple, you know, kind of tour of like these asteroids, and we're following this uh, little spaceship that I made years and years and years ago that I recently converted to Unreal Engine and retextured in Substance Painter and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, these turrets start to fire at it, um, you know. They uh, track it, so they're always looking at uh, a particular actor that I've set um, every given frame. So it looks like they're just slowly rotating as they track the actor that's attached to the spaceship. Um, and, you know, they're firing uh, at a random rate. Uh, it's just random variables that I set for triggering their firing. So that's, they're all not all firing on the same frame and having it look, you know, very weird. Um, but... Um, And uh, despite what uh, one commenter on that uh, video uh, commented that they can't hit anything, well, actually they can, it's just the projectiles aren't set up to hit, actually do anything when they collide with something. So, um, other than them being probably a little too spread apart, uh, there's no, like, random variance or anything. They're always firing, looking directly at the target, so based on the speed of the ship and, you know, the... Um, uh, the speed of the projectile, they actually do a pretty good job of, uh, you know, crossing its path um, and intersecting with it. But, you know, they don't, like, explode on the collision detection or anything. I, I never really took this that far because I really am not at that uh, point in this. But um, anyway, um, now that you've kind of seen it play through, uh, I'll quickly break down on how this worked. Uh, initially, when I set it up, I animated the... Uh, uh, the you know the player character in in this case it is the um, uh, motion controller pawn which comes with Unreal Engine. Um, if you go into your content browser in the uh, uh, VR uh, uh, demo um, starter project, just go into Blueprints and it is the motion controller pawn. Uh, I did modify that a little bit. Um, but let's uh, we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, but I found that um, when I uh, executed uh, the game, the um, uh, the camera didn't stick with the with the controller. You could see like the little hands that um, represent your motion controllers just took off down the camera path. But the camera itself stayed static in the scene. I could look around, uh, but it, it didn't you know like track with the path. And that was just animating. Uh, the motion controller pawn directly, um, and that didn't work. And I suspect that's the point at which um, uh, one of my uh, viewers uh, got to and is like, "How how does this work?" Um, because uh, you know I couldn't get it to work then, and I had to create a little bit of a workaround. And I do not need to auto save. <laughs> uh, so what I did instead is I created what I'm calling a position actor. And all the position actor is, is just uh, an empty blueprint class, actor class, 
um, you know, nothing in it. Uh, there's no code being executed. It's just an empty actor. Uh, theoretically, you could use this if you wanted, but I, you know, I wanted to make sure I knew what the name was and um, that if I ever needed to add code or anything to it, I could do that. Um, and so I, you know, dragged that into the scene, animated uh, the path and sequencer, um, and then I just tried to attach uh, either in the world outliner or even here in sequencer. Um, the, uh, the, the, the character class, the, the, you know, what actually handled the VR stuff. So in this case, the motion controller pawn, I just tried to attach it in here and that didn't work. And so this is where actually having to use blueprint a little bit, uh, force that to work And Uh, this is actually very simple. Just go ahead and open this up. And so normally these three nodes are not here and there's only two uh, pins coming out of the sequence in this particular actor. So I just added another pin, created this uh, other pin, and then I just uh, uh, dropped down a get all actors of class node. And so if you don't know what this does, it searches your active game environment um, in this particular case. Uh, at the very beginning of play, so the first frame of play, it executes this code. Um, and typically that handle, you know, when you do uh, event begin play, this handles like your, you, you, your very first state of things. And so if you're firing off, you know, like time, you know, timer events or anything like that, uh, generally you do it, you know, at begin play. Um, so that, you know, if like you have to run like a, you know, something that like happens like every so many frames, it starts here. Uh, in this particular case, we only needed it to happen once, um, and so, um, you know, we didn't have to go any more complicated than what this is. So we're just getting all actors of class. Um, from the uh, out actors array pin, uh, we um, grabbed a, a get copy node. So get a copy. Um, because we only have one position actor, we can leave this at zero. Um, if you had more than one, you could use this uh, pin here to select which one you wanted. Um, or you could make it pick a random one or anything uh, that you want. If you have, you know, like I said, if you have multiple, so like every time you run it, it runs a different path, uh, preset path. Um, and then from here, um, we uh, got a uh, attach. Uh, to actor node and um, by default you know when you drag it uh, drag that pin off there it goes into the target but you actually want to put it into the parent actor uh, because the target in this case is the uh, player controller so it is the motion controller pawn um, and so we can leave that as a reference to self and then you just drag that pin into here uh, so that it looks like so it looks like this and so you know you just yeah, make it a little bit neater or something. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and so that is uh, how you get your camera to uh, follow the path, your VR camera to follow the path. Because once this executes, um, everything just attaches and it works. Um, Although, to be fair, I think it should have worked if I just attached it via sequencer. It should. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't when I did it. It could have been a bug. It could have been any number of things. But this is how I got it to work. Um, the last uh, bit of blueprint that you need to do um, is uh, whenever you have sequencer and you want a particular sequencer uh, uh uh, actor or whatever to play uh, during your, your, your game execution, um, you need to uh, either in a component blueprint or in this particular case I'm using the level blueprint uh, I have to say that I don't usually recommend using the level blueprint unless you absolutely need to 
but uh, you know, this was just a quick VR project for a friend of mine, and so I took the simplest way uh, I could possibly do uh, to make sure that this um, sequence played. Um, that had all my animations for all my asteroids and my flight path and the spaceships flying around and all that kind of thing. And so um, I grabbed uh, this particular sequence I'm using, dropped it into the level, and then uh, just called VR. So I grabbed this guy, dragged him into here, and then from here you just go play uh play uh you want sequence player and it automatically uh drops this node down in here uh much like you see here um and then you just go again from event begin play in the level blueprint you plug that into there from here uh i needed to make sure that the uh the heads mounted display so whether using the oculus or the vive uh, that it's automatically uh, picked up. So I have, uh, I'm executing a console command, which is just stereo on, and um, enabling the HMD and making sure that box is checked. Um, you may or may not need this one. I forget off the top of my head whether or not I tried with it on or off. Uh, I remember uh, getting VR to work in the past just with stereo on, but in the, I think I'm just making sure. Because uh, I don't think I've tested using this or not um, in this particular case. Uh, and that's it. Uh, obviously, I have other blueprint code, but this handles like stuff that's specific to my particular game. Um, here, uh, this stuff actually just handles the, uh, the turrets. So if we uh, go ahead and watch this again, I wish I could skip ahead. <laughs> um, well, I could have just by dragging the... Uh, the start time in the sequence, but uh, no big deal. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, we can't watch it execute. But once we get here, you know, it uh, the turrets and stuff they'll all kind of raise up on their platforms and rotate towards uh, a particular you know actor that I have designated. Um, so if uh, we actually kind of look at here, I, I kind of set up some. Uh, variables um, so I can like tweak each individual one so if I wanted to have like the uh, the muzzle flash um, you know right now I'm just using a default particle emitter um, that comes with the engine uh, eventually I will change it out for one that I've made or one that I've purchased um, usually I I make them this no big deal um, but you know some ones that other people have just look better I also have a uh, um, a muzzle flash object that I made uh, and that's what like the, you can actually see the little spike of fire that you know shoots out forward and unfortunately currently retracts back into the into the barrel but um, eventually that will be uh, fixed as well um, but basically all the code that's handling the turrets and all that type of thing uh, that's that's deeper blueprint code for, you know that might be in its own video once I have it working a hundred percent the way I want it and then I'll be willing to show that off, but um, so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to drop that onto uh, the comments for this video. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, like the video, and if you want to receive notifications, hit the bell icon. Anytime I post a video, uh, you should, uh, you know, YouTube gods permitting, uh, you should be getting a notification that I posted a video. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.